All right, students. The objective of today's lesson is that you will be able to apply foundational knowledge of linear and exponential functions to compare mathematical and real-world relationships. We have been working on linear and exponential functions all year, and now I want you to be able to take those skills that you've been developing and apply them to real-world situations, whether you're comparing two linear functions, two exponential functions, or a linear and an exponential function you should be able to take that information and do something with it. So, just as a quick refresher, we show mathematical relationships in four ways. And I'm sure you can um, rattle these off the top of your head by now, but I just wanted to pause and review. Um, that we show mathematical relationships as equations, graphs, tables, and stories. And what we've been working on earlier this year is that if I give you one of these things, you can come up with the other three. And that's a really important skill to have. But now, what if I gave you an equation and I gave you a story? And I asked you to compare those two things. Well, being able to move between these will make that a lot easier. But just understanding that these are different ways we show relationships will make um, the comparisons a lot simpler. So um, let's start by looking at an example together. Okay, the information below shows the relationship between the amount of days past D and the total money dollar sign for Maribel and Amari. Who has more money now and who earns more money per day? Okay, so we have two people here, Maribel and Amari. And there's some relationship between the amount of days to pass and how much money they have. We can see that Maribel's, um, we were given Maribel's information as a equation. And we were given Mari's, oh, sorry, Amari's information as um, a graph. And we should be able to compare these two. And this is starting with a simpler example. I know we've already done stuff similar to this in the linear functions unit, but just a quick refresher. So um, it starts off, it says, who has more money now? So right now, and let's just assume um, that we're starting at zero, kind of. Um, so when we think about linear functions, we typically show them um, as y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept or where we begin. So when it says who has more money right now, we can we can assume we're talking about the y-intercept, b. So one skill that you need to have here, and there's a lot of old skills that you're gonna be pulling from to be successful in today's lesson, is you need to be, be able to identify the y-intercept um, in both the equation and the graph, and also a story or a table. Um, so with the equation, um, it's kind of straightforward here. The 100 is the constant, right? If there's zero days past, that's what the y-intercept means. 50 times zero plus 100. Well, that tells us how much money Maribel has at zero days. She has $100, right? And that makes sense. The 100 is in the place of the y-intercept in the y equals mx plus p. So Maribel is, has $100 right now. So I'm gonna just um, clear this out and I'm gonna write now she has $100. Now let's look at Amari, because we're answering that first question. Who has more money now? Well, if we go to zero for Amari, it looks like he actually has negative money. He's in debt, right? That's what we've talked about, negative. Um, having a negative money means you're in debt. So he has negative 20, so I'm gonna write now for Amari is equal to negative $20, okay? So um, the answer here, obviously 100 is bigger than negative 20. So in this example, Maribel has $100 and Amari has negative 20, so Maribel has more money now. The second question, it says, who earns more per day? What is the rate of change? Every day, how much is each of them earning? Well, if we go back to that y equals mx plus b equation, we know that the rate of change, or the slope, is how much someone's earning per some unit of time here in this example, and this example is day. 
So we can see that Maribel, the slope of her um, function is 50. She's earning $50 per day. So I'm going to write um, per day. I could have written slope or rate of change, but I'm going to write per day. $50 for Maribel. That's a bad dollar sign. Ugh, made it worse. Okay. $50 per day for Maribel. Now let's look at Amari. Um, we don't have clear points here um, at the one or, or the odd number. I can assume this is probably one, but I'm not going to assume. I'm going to take two points and I'm going to find the slope. And again, a lot. look at all these old skills that are coming back. Now we have to find the slope from, from two points. Um, so here I can pick any two points. I'll go with um, this one which I know is 0, comma, negative 20, and this one, which I know is 2, comma, 140. So the slope, the slope is equal to the change in y over the change in x. So um, how much does y change from here, from negative 20 to 140? Well, if we do a little bit of math, the change there is 160, right? I have to go up 160 to get from negative 20 to 140. And the change in x from 0 to 2, well, we just change, you know, 1, 2, right? So the slope is 160 over 2, which is 80, which means Amari is earning $80 every day compared to Maribel's, so I'm going to write per day for Amari, is 80 compared to Maribel is only earning 50. So the answer to the second question here is Amari. Okay. So we have to use, we have to really understand linear functions to be successful in this question. After that, it's pretty straightforward. You're just comparing the two, right? Shouldn't be that difficult to compare. If you know how to find the information for Amari, if you know how to find the information for Maribel, you should be able to compare within the two. Okay, let's go to the next example, we'll do one more example together. Okay, so it says, how many years will it take for Goldenville to have a greater population than Ionaville? Okay, so it seems like we have two towns here, two cities. Goldenville, seems like a great town, is run by, an ex run extremely well, I should say extremely well, by their amazing mayor. The city only um, has four people today, and it's doubling each year. Okay, so that place sounds awesome. Ionaville, on the other hand, uh, it has a population, well, it's represented, we're looking at a table, but we can see here in year zero right now, has a population of 80, and it looks like their population is going down. So the first step here is we're going to have to identify what type of functions are each of these. And, um, you know, we looked at exponential functions enough to know that when we see a word like this, oops, when we see a word like double, we're probably looking at an exponential function. It says, how many years will it take for Goldenville to have a greater population than Ionaville? Well, one way we could do this is we could just expand out each of these tables to see when does Goldenville overtake Ionaville. So that's one way to do it. So let's look at that way first. Sometimes that won't work. You'll be drawing on a table forever and it'll just be too tedious. Um, but sometimes it is a quick solution. So let's try that first. Well, let's just expand this table. Let's expand this one down to like seven. Okay, so four, five, six, seven. And we're assuming that this is going, moving linearly, right? And we can assume that because, well, it has a population of 80, then it goes down by four, then it goes down by four, then it goes down by four. We're going to assume that pattern continues and that it's going down by four each year. The um, rate of change for Ionaville, or the slope, appears to be negative four. So I'm just going to keep going down four. 68 minus four is 64. 64 minus four is 60. 60 minus four is 56. 56 minus four is 52. So seven years from now, the population of Ionaville will be 52. Let's draw out a chart for Goldenville, this extremely well-run town. 
Then we have the year and the population, and I'm going to do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Good, I made it all the way to 7. Okay? And let's just fill these in. So at year 0, we have 4 people. Now it's doubling every year. So you, a lot of, you know, you can do this math without even really writing out an exponential function. If we double 4, it's 8. It's going to be a little hard for me to write, fit these in. Maybe I should make these, make it a little more clear here. Okay, so uh, after one year, there's eight people. Again, it's doubling. It's not increasing linear. So the next number is not 12. We're not adding four each time. We're doubling the previous number. So um, eight doubled, or times two is 16. 16 times two is 32. 32 times 2 is 64. Hopefully you guys are getting these before me. If there was real students, I would be calling on them. 64 times 2 is 128. And um, 128 times 2 is 256. And 256 times 2 is 512. So we can see when something increases exponentially, it goes up really, really fast. Eventually, this will become a very, very large number. Um, after seven years, the population of Goldenville, which has run extremely well, you know, everyone has jobs, there's little crime, etc. People want to live there, that's why the population is doubling, is 512. And the population of Ionaville is only 52. And remember, Ionaville started with 80 people, well, um, Goldenville only started with four, it had 20 times the population. So let's see what the question says. I'm rambling. It says, how many years will it take Goldenville to have a greater population than Ionaville? So I'm looking for the first year where Goldenville is larger than Ionaville. I can see um, at year four, at year four, they have the exact same population of 64. But then at year five, Goldenville has a population of 128, while Ionaville has 60. So I know it takes five years for the population of Goldenville to surpass the population of Ionaville. Okay, I have a little bit more time here, so I'm going to show one more um, way you could have gone about this, is you could write an equation for each of these and put it into Desmos. And I'm going to do this kind of quickly. Um, so the population of Goldenville is doubling each year. Um, there's a bunch of ways you can do this, but we're going to use y equals a times b to the x because this is, we've identified this as an exponential function. Um, a is going to be where we start out initially. So I'm going to put a 4 there since it started with 4 people. B is um, the proportion in which we are accelerating, which here we are doubling, and doubling we know means 2. So we can write this as 4 times 2 to the x. I'm going to go over to Ionaville. And we know this is a linear equation because it's going down by the exact same amount each time. So we're using y equals mx plus b. And we started, b began at positive 80. And we're going down 4 each time. And we know down is shown by a negative. So we get y equals negative 4x plus 80. So if I really quickly wanted to take these two and put them into Desmos, you know, we can assume students have learned a bunch of Desmos by now. So we have y equals 4 times 2 to the x. And we have y equals negative 4x plus 80. And we zoom out. And we can see where these lines intersect at 4 comma 64. Again, because that's where they are exactly the same. So we're looking for the first year that Goldenville, which is represented by the green line here, the exponential function, surpasses it. And we can see by year five, it's clearly um, much higher than um, Ionaville. So that's another way to do it, to see where they intersect and then just go ahead. Okay, well, Goldenville is higher immediately after they intersect. Okay, so let's erase this. Again, that's just two examples of comparing these functions. To be successful in this, you need to be able to apply um, these skills on your own. 
I cannot show you every possible circumstance of when we can compare two real world functions. You need to be able to problem solve on your own. This is not a concrete skill like the Pythagorean theorem or long division. It's applying foundational skills that we've been building all year and the problem solving abilities that I know you have to solve unique real world and mathematical problems that you haven't seen before. So we're going to um, take some time to practice now um, with our math buds. Remember to make sure that you are both invested in each other understanding. So if one person doesn't get it, help them out. Um, you guys are math buds for a reason and I will give you 20 minutes to practice now.